Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. He gave me something to look forward to advice hello, this is a secondary account because it wouldn't be great if my wife stumbled onto this post. Long story short, I'm looking for some ideas on how to coexist in a large complicated family situation where my wife cheated on me and I absolutely can't leave the house. The situation is that we are both in our early 50s and have been together for over 30 years. We have six kids, including a son who is severely handicapped and would never be able to live anywhere but with us. The other kids kind of come and go as their lives change, jobs and college semesters and relationships end, etc. We have two left in high school who, theoretically, will be off to college in about two years, leaving just my wife and me here with our handicapped son. Important information here is that our son needs near constant supervision around the clock. He's not very mobile, but he is big and can get around and if someone isn't there to redirect him he could get hurt. On top of that, he hasn't slept more than two hours at a time probably ever in his life. It's completely exhausting for everyone involved. Other relevant info is that we live for free in a house owned by her parents at the back of a large piece of property, it's the house my wife grew up in, her mom and dad built a new place on the other side of the property. Her family is amazing and supportive and they help us out constantly. I work for 12 hour shifts a week while my wife stays home but we still divide our day into halves. I have Tony from midnight until noon every single day, and she has him from noon until midnight, that's usually when I'm at work. Did I mention it's exhausting? Anyway, I can go into the details of the story if anyone wants to hear it but essentially one of my daughters caught my wife cheating on me a year ago. My daughter told me what she suspected and I'm ashamed to say I didn't believe her, about a month after that I caught her pretty much red-handed. She immediately confessed and tearfully told me that it didn't mean anything and that this guy just gave her something to look forward to. He's a ridiculous scumbag who lives in our neighborhood, by the way. We've met socially a few times. I know I can't settle up with him in any meaningful way, but I've definitely daydreamed about it. Sorry this is so long and disjointed, it hurts like hell to actually type all of this out. This whole thing went down a year ago and my wife has done everything humanly possible to make things right, but I can't get over it, and I also can't leave. Who would watch Tony? He can't, won't ride in a vehicle, so if I left I'd still have to come back here every 12 hours, that would be no life at all. If my son wasn't in the picture I'd be long gone. It isn't that I don't love my wife and I forgive her, but I'll never, ever be able to forget her infidelity and how it all went down. If you made it this far, thanks for letting me vent, I'm pretty lonely since she, my former best friend, stabbed me in the back. Anyone see an off-ramp for me here? You don't have time for extras in your day, but your wife did. Leave. Work longer hours so you can afford to be on your own and visit your son. Let your wife take care of him more, she has the time for it. I am sorry you are here and this situation is not working out. I hope you have been doing what you can to help take care of yourself. I know you are sacrificing so much for everyone else. But what have you done to take care of yourself? I really highly highly recommend you start doing that and if that means your partner has to suffer. Well that's her issue. If you haven't started individual therapy then I would start sooner than later. Yeah she needs therapy but so do you to help process the pain and to help you find the person you have lost over these many years. Maybe you should look into extending your house and making your own place so you can get away and be yourself and take time to take care of yourself. I guess maybe one of those granny pods can be your own place. I hope your wife does find this post just because she needs to know what she has done has broken the family. It wasn't just you but your daughter as well. She brought evil into the family. Please up take care of yourself and cry if you need to and yell from the pain and do things that make you happy and healthier. You are worth it. Thanks for this amazing response. 
I bet you're a great listener in real life. You are so right about the damage my wife did to the family, but especially to my daughter. That relationship is probably destroyed forever. I hope all those illicit orgasms and late night sexy texts were worth it. I do have access to all kinds of therapy, even in my small, rural area. It's tricky, though, because of my profession. Hard to explain too much without completely doxing myself, but although counseling is theoretically available to me anytime it would be career suicide to accept that. I really feel like I'm okay, though. It turns out my superpower is compartmentalization. I hadn't even really considered building a little caseton on the property, I kind of like that idea, honestly. That's exactly the kind of outside of the box suggestion I was hoping to find here, so thank you. Compartmentalizing isn't healthy either because toxic stuff like this will eat away at your box and once it's leaking out your box it will get to your other boxes causing them to leak out. I assume your job requires a lot from you and to ask for help or show weakness is looked down upon but trust me and that it's okay to say I'm not okay and get help. I would highly encourage marriage helper if you were wanting to make your marriage work but right now you need to surround yourself with love and support and build up yourself. I just hope you know you are worth more health than suffering and taking a vacation is not a luxury but a requirement to save yourself and balance your life. Thank you for all of that. I just googled marriage helper and found a program with that name slash com. Is that what you're recommending? If so, I'll definitely look into it. Joint marriage counseling is the only thing we probably have left to do and, honestly, I'm the one who has resisted it because I can't imagine what she could ever say or do that would allow me to invest in this relationship again. I'll never, ever be able to trust anything she says, for example. I've already forgiven her, and I mean that sincerely. Our lives are hard and, looking from the outside in, I can see how an affair could be exciting and a distraction. As the victim of all those exciting distractions, though, I just don't see a way to rebuild what we once had. You do have me thinking, though, that we should maybe give it a try. I'm definitely going to check out the website you recommended, thank you. So, why stay? You've forgiven her. Why not be safe alone or better yet, be available to the possibility of someone safe and trustworthy? I don't buy this thought process that your lot in life is cast with your son's condition. There's a multitude of families for one. Arrangements can be made. You staying in that home with constant reminders of her illicit orgasms and sexting is self-abuse. Your kids are old enough to cope with the change. They want you truly happy, no? Sort of an update from that guy with the handicapped adult child and the cheating wife. Update. I've gotten a bunch of messages from kind, or maybe just curious, folks here wondering if there's been any movement in my situation, and there's been a little, so I figured I'd sit down tonight and tap out a few paragraphs letting anyone who cares know what's going on. You can check my post history if you want all the details, but the short version is that my wife had an affair, got caught, and spent the next year jumping through all kinds of hoops to convince me to stay and to love her again. The thing is, I never stopped loving her, and I never will, but I absolutely can't ever trust her again so our marriage is probably going to have to end. The fly in the ointment for us is that one of our kids is severely handicapped and it takes all of us, extended fam included, to wrangle him on a day-to-day -day basis. So, what's changed since my last post? I finally, after a year of this achingly painful limbo, told my wife that we needed to sit down together and figure this thing out. Living in the same house and being civil, pleasant to one another just isn't sustainable anymore. I read and thought a lot about each and every message I received when I posted before and one that really got to me was a person who, kind of passive aggressively, asked me what kind of an example I was setting for my kids. I've always actively tried to teach them that actions have consequences, but here I sit today being a sad hypocrite. Anyway, before this becomes too long and unreadable, here's how that conversation went. As soon as we sat down, she started sobbing hysterically. 
She fully expected me to tell her that we are getting divorced. I told her that I am sick and tired of this limbo that we have been living in and that it is not fair to anybody involved. She just kept sobbing and asking what else she can do to fix us, but I told her that I just don't see a way back from this. The thing is that I could probably have found a way to forgive a one night stand, or something along those lines. But the fact remains that she had a long, complicated, secretive affair. That affair could not have existed but for the thousand lies she had to tell, and I just can't get past that. Anyway, against the advice of pretty much everybody on this site, I agreed to go to a marriage counselor with her. During our first, and only, session I was admonished that I needed to be doing more to fight for my family. I told her that the way I saw things was that my wife gave our family away in exchange for some furtive orgasms, and our 50 minute session went downhill from there. On a positive note, during the car ride home, my wife and I shared the best and most genuine laugh we've had together in over a year when she pointed out that the therapist looked and sounded exactly like the secretary from Ghostbusters. We're going to try another counselor in December, I'll let you all know how that goes. One kind of personal but interesting development is that my wife asked me very nicely to return to our bedroom. She said that she hasn't slept well since I quit coming in there. She also told me that she wants us to start having sex again. We did that evening and it was amazing. I told her before and after, that the sex didn't change anything substantive with our relationship, and she said she understands. She just said it was nice to be held again, and I kind of agree with her. We have been together for so long, and it just feels natural. Of course, about 5 minutes after we were done I couldn't help but think about her doing that with someone else which kind of ruined the whole thing for me. But I kept my mouth shut. She also begged me to go through her phone, to prove she's not cheating again, I guess. I told her that I'm a cop for 48 hours a week already, and that I'm not interested in policing her text messages, either. It made me think though. I didn't offer my phone to her, but if she had asked for it, I would have handed it over to her. The only interesting thing she would have found is this alt reddit profile. Food for thought. Sorry this got so long. I'm not optimistic that any of this changes anything, but it feels nice to be making some kind of progress even if that progress is in a direction that my wife doesn't want. Thanks for listening. It's confusing because based on the actions, counseling, having sex, seems to be going exactly where she wants it to go. Yeah, you're not wrong. The only real consequences for her so far have been some side eyes at church and the stress she's feeling from having to watch her family dissolve. But her family isn't really dissolving at all if you're still living in the same house, back to sharing a bedroom, to help her sleep, how selfish and entitled if her, and having sex, since she isn't having it with her boy toy I guess you're her backup so she can get her ox off. You're right. She intentionally lied to you over and over and over. And you're still at her beck and call like a sad little puppy dog giving her whatever she wants. She's completely ignoring what you want and need and trying to convince you to give her what she wants. And you're okay with it. I mean this nicely. You need to grow a spine and get away from this woman. She doesn't love or respect you. And as soon as she reels you back in I wouldn't doubt if she cheats again. And you'll stay a second time. Yup. She has everything exactly the way she wants it by the sounds of it. Which is okay. This isn't necessarily a power struggle. As long as it's what you want. Which by the sounds of it, it isn't. So what are you doing here, man? Anyone else would call this reconciling with an unhealthy dose of rug sweeping. Just know what you're getting into if and when you pull the tending rug out. She'll just say that everything is getting better. And the thing that gets me is the sex. I mean. The health consequences of the risks you are taking. You could have for the rest of your days and make it really hard for you to move on with someone else. You're playing with a loaded gun here, man. Eventually it's gonna go off somehow. Mind movies of the WS with the AP are not easy to overcome, and often they make a successful are impossible. Plus discovering your wife's affair is traumatic. 
I see for you would be a good choice to help you deal with the aftermath of D-Day, help understand your options, and possibly help you deal with the mind movies. In the meantime, she needs to understand what inside her mind gave her permission to cheat on you. She won't be safe to our with until she understands that and fixes herself. You can't force that, you shouldn't have to ask for it. Good luck, you're going to need it, whichever path you take. My wife has been in IC since all this happened, and I've had a few online sessions last month. Honestly, my sessions were just me venting, blowing off steam, I'm not sure how much I got out of them. I mean, this whole thing happened because of her choices and decisions, not mine. My only decisions now are if I'm leaving the marriage, probably, and when. How is the relationship between your wife and daughter who caught her? Oh, that relationship is shattered. That daughter hasn't spoken to mom since everything blew up, and she had to work on Thanksgiving this year. Skipping Thanksgiving just isn't done in this family, it's a huge blowout affair with about 100 friends and family members, we don't have to host, thank goodness. I'll be surprised if they talk again in the next decade or so. It's ugly. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Did you try to put in a good word for your wife, with your daughter? I talk with my daughter every single day, I'm trying to be rock solid for her. She's never heard me say a bad word about her mom and I only listen when she vents. It's hard to explain, but my wife was the absolute super mom and the foundation of all of us, including cousins and nieces and nephews. I'm sure she's telling her therapist that she just cracked under the pressure of being perfect, and I don't dispute that she was carrying a heavy load, but so am I, and I've managed to keep my business where it belonged for decades. True that brother, true that. We hope that by sharing these stories with interested folks like you, we can help people recognize the signs of a relationship in trouble, and avoid so many of these heartbreaking situations yourselves. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are, 